Hey guys, I think we are live. This is episode, and somebody comment, let me know where you're watching from. This is episode 111, and today you're going to learn how rental is revolutionizing the uh, the vacation stay uh, experience. I love this episode. I love everything that we're going to learn today. Guys, comment and let me know where you're watching from. Let's get started. <laughs> Hi, welcome to the Hospitality Live with Rupesh, the hotel industry's top weekly resource for everything hospitality. Each week, you'll hear insights and the latest trends. Plus, get ready to be inspired by hotel leaders that are here to help you grow. Now, here's your host, Rupesh Patel. What's up, guys? It is another Wednesday. Super excited for this conversation because uh, it's something that we typically don't talk about when we talk about that resort experience well today we're talking to the ceo of uh rental resorts and ndm hospitality let me bring this off there you go guys comment and let me know where you're watching from i'm going to bring you guys up uh we have raleigh north carolina we have new york uh we got a bunch of people watching i can't wait to uh get this conversation started guys um today we're going to talk about the first branded residential resort um, that these guys created hospitality innovation, uh, technology, the resort experience, all of that. Uh, we have Chicago in the house, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Let me pull this off. This is episode 111. I can't believe that. It's like it's been amazing to connect with so many of you guys and keep it going, guys. You know where this uh, this goes next it is the uh, sponsor, and you guys know it's smartguests.com with over 50 tools and 4,600 and I think 55 customers nationwide. Smart Guests can help your hotel with its uh, reviews, customer service scores, operations, all of those things all on one website, fast shipping, free or free shipping, fast print services. Super excited. Somebody put in smartguests.com. Let's see where else people are watching from. Houston, we got Alabama in the house, South Carolina house, Daytona Beach in the house. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Smart Guests, somebody put that in the comments, www.smartguests.com. Thank you so much to Smart Guests. Guys, every week I have a uh, mindset, and this week's mindset, here it is, I posted it yesterday, is thinking outside of your hotel. Now, often we get caught up in our own hotels and we're in the operations. We're like, all right, uh, we don't know what's going on outside, in the outside world. And so yesterday I posted this comment or this poll. I said, take the poll, find out which companies would be most successful at running a hotel brand. And it's either Apple, Tesla, Google, or others. 20, 22,000 of you saw it, 758 votes. And the top was Apple. Guys, who would you vote for uh, if it was uh, uh, if this if one of these companies was a hotel brand or they created a hotel? I would love to learn which one you would pick um, out of these uh, three. Or someone even said Chick Fil A. I think Kimberly said Chick Fil A, and that was pretty awesome because I never I, I didn't think about Chick Fil A as a uh, as a hotel because they have such great service in the F and B side. We're going to talk about all of those things uh, with the CEO of MD Hospitality. Uh, and rental resorts. Guys, uh, thank you so much to everybody that has uh, been following. We hit 50,000 followers last week, and it was amazing for all the different messages that came through. Um, hang on. Let's see. All right. Guys, uh, is the signal okay? I think I'm getting uh, I'm getting some uh, loss in signal, I think. Ah, all right. Never mind. All right. So we got uh, Kimberly in the house. Uh, Rashmi says Google. Diane says uh, Apple. Uh, I, you know, I think Apple would, I'm a big, I'm working off of an Apple uh, product right now. I have my iWatch, I have the phone, I, I pretty have everything Apple around me. And so that is, uh, that is definitely a thing. All right. So let's talk about uh, hosp or the uh, hospitality minute with Sarah. And, you know, Sarah's not here. We talked about this last week. She's in Germany. But she is bringing you a show. Let's bring Sarah on. Hi, I'm Sarah Dandeshi from Ask a Concierge. Every week, I'll be sharing the latest hospitality and travel news and updates in a segment we like to call Hospitality Minutes. All right, welcome back to this week's Hospitality Minute, where, as you can see, I am not coming to you from my normal location. I'm actually coming to you 
pre-recorded but live from Germany. Right now I'm in the stunning Rostock, which is a beautiful town in the northern part of Germany. And tomorrow when you're going to be watching this, I will be cruising the streets of Potsdam. So uh, that being said, if you are on Instagram, be sure to check out uh, my trip and see everything that I'm up to here. It's a really exciting time and I'm working with the local tourism board here in Germany. Now, that being said, why don't we go ahead and get to the hospitality minute? All right. We'll do this without shaking things up so much. All right. Well, uh, new data shows that hotel recovery is expected in 2022, which is great news. According to an Amadeus Demand 360 data study, hotel occupancy is up over 2020, which we know. Um, and global hotel occupancy peaked at 60% in July in 2021. That's nearly doubling 2020's performance for the same month that year. Now, that so that being said, there are some changes. According to Amadeus, 20% of global hoteliers have implemented a daily opt-out of cleanings, and they say that they plan to keep it in place long-term. Curious, let us know in the comments, Are is your property um, making sure that they're not doing daily cleanings and that people actually have to request them? Also, another uh, thing in note in the study, 30% of hoteliers in the global survey are most excited about the acceleration of contactless tech to enhance the guest experience. Think mobile check-ins and checkouts and all sorts of other things. I know that we have definitely been trying to implement that for years, and the pandemic has certainly accelerated that process. Now, that being said, uh, why don't we go ahead and make that a little bit larger? Some other interesting things is that um, while obviously some challenges remain in place. 53% of survey respondents actually expect pre-pandemic levels of occupancy to return to 20 in 2022. So um, that is definitely pretty optimistic. Now, that being said, all right, another aspect of the travel and hospitality industry, the airlines. Um, there was a study that was done that actually rated the best U.S. airlines for flying with pets. Why is this important? Well, we are also seeing this in hotels as well, too. More and more people are actually traveling with their pets. So who are the top winners? Well, Alaska Airline is definitely took first place across the board. Um, but in second and third place tie was American Airlines and Hawaiian Airlines. Now, some others, just in case you were wondering and you were traveling with a pet, Frontier and Southwest came in fourth and fifth, respectively, followed by Spirit in sixth, JetBlue in seventh, Delta in eighth, and United in last place as the least pet friendly airline. So that is definitely good to know. And all of that, by the way, is according to Nerd Wallet's analysis. Now, moving on, another interesting thing, we have been talking about this, definitely not new news by any means, but now we're starting to get a little bit of feedback. Agents and executives are now weighing in on the new Marriott and Wyndham all-inclusive brands. As we have seen a lot of these bigger brands, Marriott Wyndham, also even um, by also Hyatt as well too, is getting in on the all-inclusive game because I had just acquired Apple Leisure Group, which also includes AMR Collection. Um, what is the feedback? What do you guys think? Are you happy about these bigger brands uh, tapping into the all-inclusive market? Uh, the feedback generally across the board is that people are excited about it. Granted, it is going to be a bit of a, it's a change in a business model. So still is yet to sort of see how um, how they perform, but definitely very interesting. And it also goes to show you that that is where travelers are looking to spend their money and um, and book their travels. So all of that's really interesting. Love to hear what your thoughts on it. Uh, that being said, that is it for today's Hospitality Minute. Um, as I mentioned before, I'm in Germany. So come follow the stories, send a shout out. And without further ado, enjoy the rest of the show. See you guys Thanks. next week. Thanks, Sarah. Sarah's awesome. Please follow her on Instagram at Ask a Concierge. YouTube, she's on every single channel. Her Instagram is huge. Uh, over 125,000 followers with a check mark. I love Sarah. Guys, comment and let me know what your favorite, favorite, favorite airline is. And I said this in the comments. Mine is, uh, I like I like JetBlue and I, I like Delta too. They've done a great job as far as the experience uh, from Orlando to anywhere else. It's always been awesome. Um, and a, 
And I think I've never gotten delayed on either of those um, airlines, which is surprisingly because I've been on other ones. Uh, my least favorite, I'm going to tell you my least favorite is Spirit. Um, I actually flew with them a couple of weeks ago. And it was a bad experience. But uh, listen, uh, you know, it, to each its own. And uh, let's let's get on with the show. All right. This is episode 111. And I know we have people from all over the world watching, um, including I just saw a comment saying Africa, which is awesome. Uh, all right, so our featured guest is the CEO of NDM Hospitality and Rental Resorts. And let me see if I can pull up his uh, bio real quick because he has an amazing background and um, I love everything they've done uh, with the brands. Uh, all right, so Nicholas Falcone is the founder of NDM Hospitality Services. And in 2011, his vision became uh, was a big vision. He wanted to be a multifaceted hospitality conglomerate. Uh, Nick and his entire team have let have led the charge in dining and curating vacation resort industry um let's just bring him on real quick and talk about his background because super interesting he and his team own and operate the margaritaville here in orlando and kissimmee nick welcome to the show thank you so much rupesh appreciate you having me on today and hello everybody that's joining hey nick so tell us about your background you know i think you started in the FMB side where, uh, or even earlier than that, I think you guys have been, your family's been in the, in the, uh, in the, uh, real estate business, right? Yeah. So, uh, my, my family has been in the real estate business for over 45 years. I grew up around it, you know, um, remember as a young kid, you know, going into the construction fields and helping in any way I could with even, you know, sweeping out the lots and doing what we needed to do. And, um, you know, fast forward, I always also grew up around restaurants. My family's been in the restaurant business my entire life. Um, you know, and so naturally when I got into my career and was looking for things to do, you know, gravitated towards that world and, uh, got my start with a company called BurgerFi. Listen, I just had BurgerFi two days ago and it's awesome. Um, I love their fries. I like to cry and fry. What about you? <laughs> I, you know, I'm a big fan of their product. I think, you know, with the fries, they're, they're incredible. We hand cut them actually. Um, you know, so it's a really great fresh product and, uh, it's definitely one of our calling cards. Uh, the crying fry is a big seller for sure. Absolutely. And here's you uh, starting out. And tell us about the the uh, the background with BurgerFi and um, how you guys have that. You're, I think you have the entire county. Is that correct? Yeah. So we uh, that that picture is actually from nine years ago. That looks like our Davy uh, location in South Florida. Uh, we got involved with the brand actually ten years ago. We were the founding franchisees for BurgerFi, and um, when we got involved with them, they had one location for Lauderdale. And uh, we were the first franchisee to open a location. We actually purchased the territory of Miami-Dade County. Uh, we're now up to seven locations with three more on the way. And um, you know, the brand has come such a long way. They went public last year and you know have had some good success with that. They actually just announced a, a cool merger the other day with Anthony's Coal Fire Pizza. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, really cool things happening with the brand. So excited to see where it goes in the future. Yeah, it's, and two of my favorite brands. I love the pizza. I love the burgers that you guys yeah. offer over there. Uh, so tell us about what you learned from the restaurant side that has now brought you into the hospitality and the hotel side of things. Yeah, you know, I'm a big believer that restaurants, you know, really teach you so much and so much nuanced detail of how you can operate other businesses as well. You know, the thing that is kind of cliche, but you hear often about restaurant is you have to count the pennies. You have to really be in the details. And there is, in my opinion, no better blessing than getting in and getting that type of experience that could then apply to other businesses. For me in particular, I was really happy with the path that I took because now that I'm in hospitality and hotels, it, it actually gave me a very fresh perspective and new perspective, which led to what we're doing today. And so I'm very thankful for the fact that I, I actually never grew up working in the hotel industry and, and kind of understanding how it's typically been done. And so, you know, that's really what led us to founding rental resorts, it, you know, uh, kind of going into that story for a second. It was a it was a dinner table conversation with my father, who's a developer, as we mentioned earlier. And he was mentioning how in Orlando he was selling you know, real estate. And unlike all the product he'd sold in the past, you know, where it was to a primary uh, homeowner that wanted to live in the product. You know, these were people that wanted to buy the house for investment. So we're talking about that and he's telling me the questions that people are asking, you know, it's all about how do I rent it and who do I go to? And I, I was just so intrigued that I went, I started staying in vacation homes, learning about the industry and really learned that we could do things in a much different, in my opinion, better way. And um, 
you know, the rest is history. We founded Rental Resorts about five, six years ago, and you know, we've had a lot of success up to this point. Right. So tell us about the background or not the background, but what does Rental Resorts do? Yeah. So, you know, when you look at homes and renting homes, I'm sure a lot of you have experienced this. You go on any of the platforms, you know, and there's many of them out there now where you can rent a home. You're going to see every individual home listed. And in many cases, you're, but what, what we found was that in many cases, you're sacrificing the amenities and the experience yeah. of staying in a resort. You're really staying in a standalone accommodation you know, so you have to you know, take care of yourself. You don't have maybe, you know, the various restaurants and amenities and things you would get at a full service resort product. And, you know, not only that, but there wasn't really brand standards. There wasn't brands associated with the product where you knew what you were going to get. So what Rental Resorts does, we're the first platform that has been built where we put the resort first, but we rent these type of accommodations. So when you go on our platform, you're going to, you know, uh, put in, you want to go to Orlando or wherever you want to go. It's going to show you the various resorts that we have, the amenities, the services, the experiences you can get at those resorts, and the accommodations are, are all houses. So it's really bringing together the best of both worlds between having a great spacious accommodation along with those services and amenities that people love at, you know, at the resort setting. Yeah, and I'm pulling it up real quick, and you know, it's very easy to kind of search on what you want, uh, and it kind of shows where you guys offer you know, uh, your, your rentals. And, and I like it because here's the thing. I, we want to go on like a Thanksgiving trip or a, a holiday trip and you find a house, but it doesn't have the big pool. It doesn't have like the water slide. It doesn't have all the things that you might want in a resort setting in a hotel experience, um, especially the FMB side where like we don't want to cook every single day at our house, right? Um, yeah. they, they, we want to go out, but we want to stay within the community. And um, especially if it's a bigger, you know, family, um, uh, where you might have like four or five families staying in one home. It's fun to get out and, and experience the different water parks, the different, you know, activity just within the resort. And that's what you guys offer, right? hundred percent. It's, you know, that that's exactly what we offer. A, a great story that really you know explains just what you're talking about. I was going to a wedding right before the pandemic started in, in New York. And, you know, we didn't have at the time any, any resorts in New York where this was located so friends were talking about, you know, do we stay in a hotel or do we stay in a home? And there was this you know, kind of argument, you know, some people wanted to be in a home so everyone could be together and have that, you know, that uh, bonding and, and you know, uh, the fun or whatnot. Whereas others wanted to have, you know, the ability to wake up, go to the spa to get the hair done and the makeup before the wedding and have yeah. the room service delivered every day. And it's like, which one do we choose? With rental, you don't have to choose. You get both. You get the best of both worlds. And the other cool part about it is that we're associating with brands and, and building our own brands. So now there's brand standards associated. So if you had a great experience and you love what you had, let's say in Orlando or the Keys or New York, you could see where those other locations are where you can get that exact same experience and be able to replicate it. So, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a really cool thing. Our, our guests are really loving you know, what they get at our properties. And I think it's also really unique because when you look at vacation home, it's really taken you know, a lot of the, um, the guests and the people away from hotels. You know, so you look at hotels, vacation home, there's a lot of clashing with what we do. We're all about bringing the product back to hotels, back to the brands. You know, so we have solutions where we work with brands, where we work with hoteliers to introduce this product to their resorts. And that way we can ensure that you know, we're, we're keeping the product. We're, we're really assisting these brands and these hoteliers to really you know, compete in the space. Absolutely. And I can tell you another story is we've rented so many Airbnbs and I've had family members rent Airbnbs. And what they always say is, oh, the, it it did not look like the pictures or it wasn't clean as what people said it was. And, and yep. that's why I like the brand standards that you guys offer, because you know that if you're staying at a certain major brand that you're going to get these at least these minimum standards. Right. And I, that's what I like about the homes where, yep. you know, they're going to be clean, you know, they're going to be up to this standard and you guys are, are kind of playing in the luxury space. Is that correct? Yeah. Everything we do is four star or above. You know, we, we're really uh, catering towards more of the luxury, you know, to your point, um, you know, with cleanliness, you know, and, and there was a conversation before I came on regarding daily cleans, you know, just those type of things, you know, are, are things that you don't necessarily get with a vacation home today. You know, so bringing that into the mix of our product is, is really key and providing that higher level guest experience. You know, I think that's what their luxury clientele is looking for 
is to be catered to, you know, and that's exactly what we do. We'll bring chefs into the house. We'll bring, you know, uh, massage therapists into the house, you know, anything that you could imagine, we're going to bring it right into the house or have it at the resort in one of the amenity centers and be able to really curate the experience and do, you know, do things that are over the top for what people come to expect with this product. Right. And I'm going to pull up the Margaritaville uh, real quick and kind of explain uh, the concept behind this and how you partner up. And you guys partner up with other brands, too, not just Margaritaville, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we have uh, brand partnerships that we are currently existing with Margaritaville. Uh, also, the Jack Nicholas Company, you see the uh, the Bearstone Resort there. And uh, so th we actually have both of those resorts in the Orlando market. Uh, and we are talking to brands about doing international agreements where we could replicate these all over the world. Uh, but specifically with Margaritaville, you know, we were, you know, really debating what's the right fit for the Orlando market. You know, there's so much here. This is, you know, this town's all about family and it's all about, you know, ensuring that, um, you know, people, the whole family is having a great experience. And especially, obviously, it's catered towards the kids with the theme parks. And so what we found was somewhat of a missing void in the market was how can we bring people and transport them to a place where they could take advantage of the family experience and have fun for the kids, but how could the adults also have fun? And we felt that was kind of that void that was missing in the Orlando market. I would talk to people all the time that would say, you know, I brought my kids to Disney. We spent five days, you know, 13 hour days at the park all day. Then we go back to a hotel room. We don't get sleep and we start over again. And mom and dad, when they get home, they need a vacation after the vacation to refresh and so, you know, we thought we could do something to where we could provide a product that's, you know, really fun for everybody. And so that's where this was born. The Margaritaville brand we felt was really appealing to a wide demographic. And we felt that it would provide that fun for the parents and for the, you know, for the entire family. And then at the property, we mixed it with, you know, an amazing entertainment district. We do 24 seven, or excuse me, we do, um, you know, 365 days a year, live entertainment and really cool events and whatnot. You had had up the map of our water park. We actually have a water park there. So, you know, yeah. if you didn't want to go to Disney, you could stay on property. Um, you know, so really, you know, right here at the destination, there's something for everybody and everyone could really have a great experience. Yeah. And you don't even have to leave the entire uh, the, the resort. Everything is there. And what I like is you have the community of, you know, cottages, too. It's not just the hotel. So because I see the embassy suites by Hilton there as a condo package. Tell us about that, because, you know, a lot of our listeners are, are that branded have that branded experience. Yeah. Yeah. So we have a really cool mix of accommodations here. So you, you can see right in the middle there. We have the Margaritaville Hotel. That's 187 rooms. We're actually about to do a 77 room expansion um, that's under construction right now. So we're really excited about that. But then, if you um, go to the right, bottom right, you know we have already over 450 cottages that have been delivered, and all those become an extension of the resort. The cottages range from one to eight bedrooms. You know, so an eight bedroom house, you could be you know sleeping up to 18 people in it. Uh, so incredible for, you know, bringing families together or large groups. We're also, as you mentioned, doing the embassy suites. So, you know, with embassy suites by Hilton, it's actually the first condo hotel embassy suites in the world. And so, you know, we're really excited about the fact that both with Margaritaville and with Hilton, we're doing really things that are trailblazing. You know, this was the first cottage resort for Margaritaville. We helped them develop the brand standards, you know, how to market it, how to distribute the product you know, how to set up the rental program and the legal structure. And those are all things that rental resorts does. There's a lot of complexities and things that developers can do that could really affect the success of the property. And so those are things that we did with this developer, with this brand to ensure that the property was set up, you know, in the correct way, you know, to ensure that sales were good, that uh, rentals were structured properly, and that we could really, you know, again, create it as an extension of the resort. And then we felt with the Embassy Suites product, again, being the first for sale Embassy Suites in the world, um, you know, we were also able to work with the Hilton brand to create a, somewhat of a new look and feel. Um, I think that people that go to this product will see it's, it's nothing like a typical Embassy Suites, um, but it does have a lot of the really cool service factors and you know, the, um, the things that you come to love and, and, and know about an Embassy Suites or whatnot. So blending of some you know good uh, things that they've had in the brand for a while along with new stuff that we've helped them introduce and that product just started selling it's going to be delivered and we're going to start renting uh, sometime next year so lots of really cool stuff but this this resort actually at build out will have over 900 for sale product that's going into the rental program 
It'll have over 4,500 rooms at build out, which will make it, I believe, the second largest resort in the state of Florida by room count. The number one uh, resort in the state of Florida by room count would actually be down the street. It's the other product that we have called the Encore Resort at Reunion. And that's actually 6,500 rooms um, made up of over 770 houses. Yeah. And you guys have a presence there. Uh, kind of talk about that because that's part of the whole rental program, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we have actually five resorts in Orlando. We have, um, you know, and they all appeal to a different consumer set. So that's the other cool thing about the rental brand, the rental resorts brand is we're really an umbrella brand. And then we have our sub brands and our, our um, you know, curated properties, let's say our resort properties underneath that, that umbrella brand that appeal to different levels of consumers. So the Anka Resort is one of our brands in the Orlando market you know, that we actually created. And um, it's an amazing property. It's a true branded residential resort. So there is no traditional hotel. We have a clubhouse that we've converted into a uh, amenity center with check-in, water parks, you know, uh, restaurants, amazing facilities. And, um, you know, and as I mentioned, the homes, over 750. And, uh, you know, they range from four to 13 bedrooms. So even larger homes there, really, really incredible. Uh, but then you go down, you know, the street, we have the Jack Nicholas Bears Den Resort that I mentioned earlier. You know, that's uh, even, you know, appealing to a more high-end uh, clientele. Those houses are, you know, $5 million houses, custom homes, and, you know, just incredible product. So everything we do is really curated to appeal to a certain consumer set, but we have a little bit of a range so that different types of consumers can find product that appeal to them. They also have different experiences. So, you know, Margaritaville would be more of our, uh, you know, Key West, you feel like you're transported to a beach area and, you know, a little bit more of that, you know, fun and excitement happening all times, live music, you know, Encore would be more of our family friendly brand. You know, it's amazing for family retreats. Bears Den's great for golf groups, for corporate groups, weddings. So, you know, different appeals for our different resorts. That is awesome. And, you know, you guys offer different experiences with the chef experience, the catering, you offer wedding packages, uh, just depends on where it is. And I see that you are all over the, the map as far as the different experiences. This is a great package that you could put together at rental resorts. Thank you so much. Um, where can people kind of experience rental resorts uh, for them, for their own selves, for their families? Because I know uh, we have people that are, have, are in the, on the comments saying they've been there and it's a beautiful place. Um, Thank you, by the way, Connie. And then, you know, Connie says, okay. are you targeting more of the leisure market versus groups? right now or what's going on because you know i think hotels are kind of experiencing that same thing where they're focusing on leisure because that's what's bringing you know rooms uh as far as rentals yeah uh, i'll answer that question then I'll, I'll go to your question as well so um in regards to that we are targeting more of the leisure market you know i think everyone's probably seeing the group is somewhat suppressed now with that though we have been seeing more and more group we're getting you know pretty decent traction actually we're seeing a lot of catering business, a lot of weddings, you know, and, and special events and things of that sort. Uh, but our leisure business is definitely driving, you know, the way and, and leading, you know, in our conversion. Um, we have seen this year that we've actually exceeded pre-pandemic numbers significantly. So I know that was one of the questions or, or comments that came up prior to me coming on. Um, we're seeing a massive lift, lift actually in performance. Um, so we're really, really happy about that. We believe that as you know, group comes back in a bigger way, international travel, we think it's really going to be incredible, you know, going into next year, especially with the pent up leisure demand on top of that. Um, but yeah, that, that would answer that question in regards to where people could experience rental resorts. Um, we actually up until four months ago, when we started our growth plan, we only had five resorts, you know, four of which were in Orlando, one in the Keys. We're now at... 25 or those scattered throughout the country and international. We're in uh, five different countries right now, um, you know, spanning from Italy, uh, you know, to the Caribbean, um, you know, and all over. We have properties, you know, also all over the country, you know, so Colorado, New York, Colorado, we actually haven't even added to the map yet because that one just came on. But, you know, we have in our direct pipeline over 350 resort properties made up of over 25,000 accommodations for existing properties that we're targeting to bring into our, our platform today. And then with our brand partners that we're about to introduce some international IP agreements with, we'd be looking to really go out and increase our, our development platform. We can as well. 
Awesome. Awesome. Well, you know, Nick, I really appreciate you coming on and kind of experiencing or sharing your experience and sharing how you've kind of created this whole thing. And I love that you have that experience on the F&B side because a lot of people are looking for that when they're staying at a hotel and now staying at a, you know, a vacation rental um, home. Uh, where can people find you? Where can, uh, what can people do as far as if they want their resort to be a part of the rental program? Yeah, uh, we have rentalresorts.com. And then you know, at the bottom of our page, we have a partners page where uh, people could reach out to us. We would love to speak to you. You know, we have so many things that we could do to impact, you know, the properties. And, and one thing I haven't really talked about today is, is technology. We are a technology you know, centric company. Everything we do really centers around our technology and the uniqueness of that. And so, you know, that's another thing I'd love to talk to anybody about in regards to you know, how we can impact we have built some really cool things, specifically you know, some of the product we're about to launch actually in the next two months. Uh, one would be our booking engine and the other one would be our loyalty program. But we're actually going to have very unique technology where in our channel management, in our booking engine, we're going to be able to have it where you could have inventory set up in multiple ways because channels accept inventory differently, as we all know, or, or a lot of people know. You know there's um, by the door listings, which you'll see on Airbnb and VRBO and the home channels where you have to list every single home individually. You know There's unit type listings, which you'll see more on the hotel side. And then all these different channels receive the inventory differently or whatnot. So we're building booking engine technology, you know, channel management technology, revenue management technology that will allow us to build the inventory in both ways, send it out in both ways, revenue manage in both ways both on our platform as well as through third-party distribution. So what it really does for us is expands exposure to the, you know, 100% of the worldwide travel market because not everyone, again, is booking one way or the other. You know, so that's a really cool aspect of our business. And then I mentioned loyalty. We're actually building a loyalty program where you could gain points for, um, you know, the, the stay that you could then use on local restaurants. You could use to go rent an apartment, buy a house, go shopping and do groceries. So think of it as a multi-industry connected loyalty program so that the biggest transactions you do in life, which is, you know, real estate transactions and, you know, rentals, you know, big jewelry, cars, stuff like that. We're going to have it where any type of industry can connect to our loyalty program and incentivize. And the reason why we felt that was so important, we're in the, we're in the home business, right? We're in the real estate business. We're talking to developers. They want to know how are we going to help them sell you know, product as well? And how does our brand accelerate the sales? This is one of the ways that we could do that. We're actually going to have it. We're in the second phase of our loyalty program. We're going to be able to map out you know, to where people could list their houses and people could actually go online and buy a house on the platform without actually having to speak to somebody and get mortgage approval you know, on the platform online. So it's really, really cool. It really connects many you know, things that we do together. And, um, you know, just really excited with how our technology is going to revolutionize the industry. That, that is amazing. I mean, I, I can't wait to see, hear more about what you guys are doing. And and for developers, people that are looking to kind of come on, um, same thing, they reach out to you through the partner page? Yeah, Rental Resorts backslash partners. It's at, There's a link at the bottom of rentalresorts.com. We have a, um, a, a lead form where you can fill it out and, and reach out to us. But, um, yeah, we're talking to developers all over the world right now. We'd love to talk to you guys. We also help developers with a lot of other aspects that would um, not typically be associated with a travel brand. I mean, we've helped developers with financing, with site plan development, uh, you name it. I mean, so we're, we're really being that our family's been in development. We've been in hospitality. We've been in finance. We're a tech company. We're a marketing company. We are truly vertically integrated to deliver to brands and developers a one-stop shop turnkey. So if you want to do a branded residential resort, we can help you with every aspect of it. And where I believe this is going to go, think about the long-term rental industry and how big funds and big institutional capital has been investing in that. That That's what's going to happen with what we're building. You know, We are building something that is going to create a professional environment where big institutional capital can get behind this. And we've already seen it. We've seen some institutional capital come in and buy tranches of houses in our resorts because of the, you know, the, um, the results that we're delivering and how much we're outperforming other uh, vacation home product in our markets. So, you know, just yeah. really excited for where it's going. And I like it because you're managing the whole portfolio, right? It's not like you, you have yep. to get a third party management company and now figure out these tranches of uh, homes there. You guys are taking care of everything. Yep. Yeah. We're the brand, we're the technology, we're, you know, we're, we're one-stop shop for everything. So it's a complete turnkey. 
Nicholas Falcom. Appreciate the conversation. Thank you so much, guys. If you loved this uh, conversation, hit the like button. Connect with Nicholas on LinkedIn. Uh, find him at Nicholas Falcone. Thank you so much. Rupesh, thank you. And I really appreciate having me on. And thank you so much, everybody, for listening. Hope you enjoyed the show. Absolutely. And, and prior to our conversation, the live conversation, I said, hey, we're going to do a live from the Margaritaville pretty soon. So look out for that in the future. Uh, Nicholas, thank you so much. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Can't wait to have you at Margaritaville. All right. Thanks. See you. See you. That was awesome. I love that they're bringing technology, bringing the home experience to a uh, a, a big, big audience. Uh, guys, hit, hit up uh, Nicholas, uh, talk to him and connect with him and see what you can do as far as your team. And if you're looking to kind of develop or if you're if you're at an independent hotel, uh, you know, this is an opportunity for you, especially resorts, uh, you know, resort setting, this might be an opportunity for you guys to sell some more rooms and and really create this long-term relationship with your guests and a great partner that's going to help you operate. Guys, thank you so much. Next week, we have some amazing people on. I can't wait to talk to them. Um, and yes, Steve says, State of Orlando was a great experience. Of course, I know a lot of people are saying that they have, they had the rental experience and they love it, especially Margarita, Margaritaville, where I've had family stay there. I can't wait to stay there, guys. Until next week, take care of yourself, take care of each other, and I will talk to you soon.